check this out. Happy Mother's Day, mothers. All these hundreds and hundreds of beautiful little white and purple flowers. This is one of my favorite times of the year. They just keep going on and on and on. In another week or two, it'll be them in full bloom and then the trillium start. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you ask me, I think I got the best backyard in the world. All right, we got success. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this morning, I've been working on getting the locks and door handles installed on the bathhouse. But uh, that's not going to be what this video is mainly about. I'm going to address a topic that if you're considering going off-grid, like I have here at my cabin, um, you may want to... Uh, consider all these things. I think it's going to be a lot of useful information and a lot of useful knowledge to somebody who's been living off-grid now for two years, uh, two and a half years. Not that that's a big deal, but we're finally starting to understand exactly how much power we need to run uh, the bare necessities that we need here at our cabin. All right, let me take you in the shower house. I want to show you my latest investment. All right, guys, check this out. We've got some Mega 200 solar panels. And then right next to it in this mess that I have here in the shower house is a portable um, solar tracking unit. So the reality is um, one of the biggest concerns of uh, uh, any type of homestead or cabin that's running um, off of solar you know, you if you don't have bright sun like I have right now, uh, you're going to have some issues with running out of, you know, battery power. And that's just the reality of it. Uh, last winter, um, we had a relatively mild winter. And so I spent a lot of time up here at the cabin. And there was about three and a half weeks that we ran with no sunlight and uh, I ran out of power for the first time at the cabin and I thought there's no way I want to do this again. So this year one of my priorities um, at the cabin here is to improve my solar and um, come up with some alternative uh, plans for what are we going to do when we have those months where we have a straight month or two of, of clouds and we're not able to charge our battery bank uh, so let me quick show you what we're using and um, the demand that we have on the cabin as far as our energy uh, requirements and um, and hopefully this will help you guys if you're considering powering up your cabin with solar man that sun is bright today that's a good feeling all right, guys, so let's talk about what we all need power for here inside the cabin. And um, you can see I've got my Bouge RV refrigerator freezer um, right here off to the side. That's where we keep all of our food. We obviously have our lighting inside here that we need power for. And uh, right now I've got that ran off of some 12 volt um, DC power. And then I also have a TV in case there's ever any weather or storms coming in. We need to figure out uh, how much power we need to run all of these things because we feel these things are a necessity. So this brings up the point of what do you do if your solar crashes and you don't have anything to, to power the cabin. And I'll show you what I've been testing this weekend. I hate sharing any of this stuff with you guys without... Um, just doing a little bit of studying on it first. It's another portable power station, and um, 
This one has got a lithium ion battery in it. So it is something that you'd want to use in warmer temperatures. Uh, you can use them uh, in any type of temperature to discharge your power. But if you wanted to charge it, you do have to charge below, uh, above freezing temperatures. So right now I still have 27% of my uh, battery capability. My battery storage is still there. And I've been running this now all weekend long. Uh, it has a uh, uh, carport for those of you that still have appliances that charge off of uh, carports. And it also has USB A and Type C ports all over here on the side for your DC power. If you want to charge your computers or cell phones or anything like that, you've got that capability um, for, you know, case of emergency everything's right there uh, you also do have four AC outlets up in the top and right now I'm just using it for our refrigerator and you know I've been on this thing all weekend charging all of our batteries the GoPro my cell phones the refrigerator and for a small cabin this would be a great alternative if you don't want to go ahead and get all the solar that we have and the way that you can um, power your whole system, this green button just turns the whole system on. Right now I'm not using any of my DC. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the DC ports off. And you can see the display is real simple. It turned them off. And, uh, and right now all that it's showing is that I am powering my AC. And this green light is indicating that I'm still using the power for my refrigerator. This is probably the most simple power station that I have experienced using here at the cabin. And the cool part about this setup is it does come with solar panels too. If you've got a small cabin like this that you need power for, if you want emergency backup at your home, or if you want to use it camping, you can bring electricity just about anywhere. And it's very simple. If I'm in the bedroom and it's late at night, I forgot to turn the TV off or any of the appliances, this thing also has Bluetooth capability where you download the app on your cell phone and you can turn it on and off. Um, you can power the AC or uh, DC outlets individually and even shut the whole thing down if you decided that you didn't need the power. So, all right, let's go outside. I'm going to show you uh, a bonus feature of this setup and that is uh, they also gave us some solar panels that you can get in this kit and i'm going to throw go ahead and throw this out on the sun and uh, we'll see how good it works these solar panels are so remote you can set them up just about anywhere they've got a leg that you detach on the back side and uh, they just unfold and you put them in the direct sunlight and right there that easy we've got power so in the back of the kit it comes with all the cords that you need to go ahead and charge your portable power station and right now i could hear the fans kick on and the unit is ready to charge. So there's a ton of these portable power stations out there. This one I chose because I love the simplicity of it. This is what I'm gonna use as I go ahead and start the construction of my new solar setup here at the cabin. I just wanted to share this with you guys because I thought it'd be useful for you. If you're not real electricity savvy and you don't know um, the ins and outs of solar power and everything, uh, set up like this you seen I just set this up in live time. I think it took me Maybe five minutes to set up and right now I'll leave this out in the Sun maybe four or five hours and it'll fully charge this 2,000 watt inverter and 2,000 watts that's a pretty good size inverter um, That you know you've seen has powered my whole cabin basically for the weekend so just wanted to share that with you. Uh, all right, let's get back to the cabin and uh, we'll see what else is going on here. Okay, so in choosing where we're going to go with these new panels, you can see right now I've got a ton of 
light blockage from these trees and the sun is barely making it through I'm gonna clear out a bunch of these trees this spring and these panels here are slightly at the wrong angle for morning sunlight these are more set up for like midday and uh, afternoon and I felt that's when I get my peak charging done so what I'm gonna do is the space over here I'm going to utilize that um, to go ahead and put up the solar tracking unit. And I figured that would be out in the open enough to where it won't be shaded by these panels. And it'll be able to have the flexibility of tracking the sun in the morning hours and getting the most energy. All right. I just wanted to share this little teaser video with you to let you know what temporary power I'm going to be using at the cabin this summer as I am upgrading my current solar system. Currently I have a 24 volt system in the cabin. It's called a MPP LV2424 and that powers the whole cabin and by adding a solar tracking unit and another 800 watts of uh, power to my solar panel assembly i believe that'll give us a ton of power and we won't be running out of power anytime soon so i look forward to sharing that solar tracking video with you in one of my upcoming videos and uh just wanted to let you guys know what direction the channel is going this spring Okay, that's about as smooth as it's going to get. We've got our concrete base set for the um, solar tracking unit. And just keep in mind when you do this, keep it below the frost level. Can't always work at the cabin. Sometimes you have to go out and enjoy the beauty of everything that's around you. Let's go for a little walk and we'll see what we can all find. Anybody hungry? We got some fiddleheads. <laughs> 